How about that? We just got a subscriber, guys. Solid. What do you think about that? We need more subscribers. That's what we need. We need all of the subscribers. We need, we need less watchers, more subscribers. Well, actually, no, 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 no. We need both. Yeah. Both. Watchers both. and subscribers. That's what we need. All right. Well, let's get the show started. Before we get into anything, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Tiger fans, Greenville is a wonderful place to call home and take it from me, a great place to grow your family. The housing market can be an extremely competitive and intimidating place if you don't have the right agent. That's why we recommend our friend and local agent, Lana Smith with Live Upstate SC Real Estate. She is a native of Greenville and has been serving the needs of families in the upstate for over 20 years. You need an agent proficient in navigating the world of multiple offers who will put your needs first and guide you through the process. Let Lana help you achieve your real estate goals. Call her today at 864-608-8313. Again, that's 864-608-8313. And let's get moving. If you're looking for a great atmosphere and good food, you have to check out the Charleston Sports Pub. They're the premier sports bar location in South Carolina with locations in Clemson, Greenville, Goose Creek, James Island, Mount Pleasant, Somerville, and West Ashley. Watch all the games while you have fun playing all their games. Tiger fans, we dine there, legends dine there like Todd Boyd, and so should you. Go eat at the Charleston Sports Pub in Clemson every game day. 359 College Avenue, Clemson. Family owned and operated serving Anderson County and surrounding areas since 1980. Heating and Cooling Services Inc. is your residential and commercial comfort expert. Anything from preventative maintenance of your home HVAC system to overhauling a commercial chiller and everything in between. If you want to breathe easier and be nice and cool in your home or business this summer or warm this winter, give Heating and Cooling Services Inc. a call today. Give Mark or Jason Trammell a call at 864-224-7655 Again, 864-224-7655, and they'll take good care of you. Tiger fans, we don't just dress for success, we TS for success. That's Tiger Sports Shop. We shop there so much that they practically begged us to be sponsors for them. Not serious, but we do love shopping at Tiger Sports Shop in one of their two locations, 364 College Avenue and 1102 Tiger Boulevard in Clemson. If you're not in Clemson to check out the experience, stop by online at www.tigersports.com. Again, tigersports.com for all your game day needs. All right, you know what's coming up next is the countdown. We're almost two minutes away from show start. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm looking at, we're going to have discussion on Joe Ngata, Shelton Lewis, Caden McDonald, ACC preseason team, Will Shipley, Barrett Carter, so many other topics to talk about. Anything you want to talk about as well, get in the chat. Make sure you say hello first because let's be, cur let's be courteous to everyone by saying hello. And then get in and tell us what your comments, questions, or emotional outbursts are about the Tigers coming up this season. Again, don't forget to hit the like button. That will definitely help us with our algorithm and uh, help us get seen by more Tiger fans out there. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, no matter where you are, uh, we want you to join in and be a part of the show. So make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow if you haven't already. And hey, be a friend, share with a friend tonight. So joining in, Big Al, Houston, Burnett, all of us here tonight. Again, the gang is back in town. We are going to be talking about the Clemson Tigers.
don't coordinate. The fact that we have a lot of the same polo shirts and yet don't ever seem to match, I feel like that's uh, a pretty good one. All right, I'm seeing the chat light up. Make sure you get in. If you're watching right now and you're not in the chat, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Tell us hello. Give us a question. Tell us what you want to, what you want to talk about tonight because we're getting ready to go live as you see there on the screen. Again, welcome in. This is the Morgan Thomas Show every Thursday night, 7 p.m. We talk all things Clemson, football, basketball, baseball, softball, whatever you want to talk about, we will talk about it. If you get in the chat, not only is it the Morgan Thomas Show, but it is your show, and it is also Big Al, Alan Adams Show, and Mr. Houston Burnett's show. Got a little bit of a mismatch here. Houston in the middle tonight. I don't know how you feel about that, Houston. Uh, no pressure for being in the middle. Maybe we should start doing a fan vote of who gets in the middle. Whoever agrees with people the most. Well, I guess what? People probably agree with Houston the most because we're going to, you know, we have a t shirt called I Agree with Houston, right? Yeah. I mean, naturally, you should always put me in the middle because I'm the best looking one. Let's just be real. Oh, yeah. I'm the best looking one. So I thought we determined uh, off camera that uh, Alan was the best looking one. That's why he's here. Uh, well, I don't know. That's, that's debatable. That's up the debate, Al. That's up to debate. <laughs> it's All good right, to be so, here, though. So no joke, man. Hey, look. Hey, my presence has been sporadic here as of late, whether it be internet issues, health issues, work issues, whatever it may be. I'm just glad to be here tonight talking some Clemson Tigers. So if you are watching, please say a little prayer for my internet because so far – Everything's good. Let's hope it stays that way. That internet, man. It's so tricky. You never know what's going to happen with Big Al and his internet. It's a jackpot. It's a, it's a Russian roulette. It's an internet roulette. Uh, we will see what happens. So hopefully you can stay with us, Al, and not freeze up. But hey, if you freeze up, make sure you stare at the camera. We want to see those beautiful blue eyes while you're frozen there. Oh, yeah. It's just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Um, Al Houston, I'm so excited to have you guys back. We didn't have a show last week. I apologize for everybody. Really, to be honest with you, people are clamoring for more content. We are over 20,000 views this month alone. So we really, and that's on Facebook by, you know, or on YouTube by itself. So thank you so much for your love and support out there, Clemson fans. And we even have Ohio State fans, LSU fans. Michigan fans, Georgia fans, Oklahoma fans. We have other fans that actually admire or like the show or want to be a part of the show because, again, it's not just about us. We don't sit here and talk the whole time and don't answer your questions or at least talk about the things you, you want to talk about. So get in on the chat room and uh, let us know what you want to uh, talk about tonight because we want to get into it. We try to do an hour. We go a little bit over because I talk too much. And uh, so let's get into it. But, Al, at the beginning of this morning, I was on the Mickey Plyler show and – Mickey always says, you know, you know, how are you doing or, or how was your week? And uh, one of my things was there's always that go to thing. So when somebody says, hey, Al, what's up? How you doing? What do you what do you say back? What's your go to thing to say back to them? Most of the time I say live in the dream, <laughs> live in the dream. Now, that was one we didn't mention on the show <laughs> this morning. There are so many to choose from. You know, you have the old Southern like better than a, a flea on a fat dog kind of thing, you know? Uh, you got that one. You got a couple of other, like one of them, you know, you always hear at work, oh, well, ask me again after my second cup of coffee. You know, right. you get that one a lot. Houston, how are you, and what is your go-to uh, response well, to the how are it you? it depends. I can say this without with confidence. I'm not Brent Venables. I'm not – I don't have the fire hose <laughs> firmly in the mouth and blowing and going. I'm not doing that. I can, say, I can say that. Uh, I don't know. When somebody's like, hey, how you doing? I'm generally awkward. I'm like, hey, yeah, guy, <laughs> how are you? Uh, so that's uh, that's the issue that I have. It's really awkward when I get caught off guard, basically. You're, are you the awkward person that responds completely wrong? Like, hey, Houston, how are you? Oh, man, it was great last night. And then you're yeah, like, well, yeah, I'm just like, uh, take luck, my pleasure. <laughs> That kind of stuff like that. My pleasure. Okay. You're going back to the Chick-fil-A world here now. Okay. Yeah. I got people in here. My dad gets in and says, Joey Thomas, living the dream. So, Al, you're already dream. starting a trend here. <laughs> All right. Now, we got another T-shirt getting ready to be made. Living the dream. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we appreciate everybody getting in. Hopefully, you're feeling good tonight and going to talk about Clemson. Um, before we get into it, guys, I'm looking at some of the hot topics over the week or, or right now that's up there. And one of the discussions is is Caden Story. I saw this on one of the websites out there. Caden Story, you know, he ended up following Nick Eason from Alabama or from Auburn to 
uh, Clemson, you know, because he was originally the, the position coach at Auburn and then moved to, to Clemson because that's where he came from, right? That's where he was a player, and now he's a coach. It's an amazing story to see him come back and be a part of Dabo Sweeney's staff. But Caden Story wanted to be a part of that, and he followed him. Now, Al, I'll start with you on this question. How big of an impact is that that, that these young players are, are seem to be immediately gravitating toward Nick Eason, and he seems to be really off to a hot start as a as a defensive tackle, defensive line recruiter out there, especially for the Tigers. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's absolutely huge. I mean, especially with the tradition that Clemson has had in the you know recent years on the defensive line, uh, Nick Eason has just picked up right where everybody left off. This is unbelievable, uh, the class he has so far, and, and potentially that's not even done yet. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, we, we talked about the need for, you know, a pass rush defensive end type, and I still wish we could we could find somebody to fill that role. But, I mean, the dude is killing it, absolutely killing it. And, I mean, Caden Story was a huge get uh, at the end of the cycle last season. Um, you know, we, we didn't really have a, a whole lot going for us, so the fact that he followed Nick Eason here was huge. But I, I don't know what y'all – I know y'all were talking about uh, top top five position coaches, or you were supposed to talk about top five position coaches a couple we did, weeks yeah. ago. Uh, and, and I think I froze up and, and wasn't able to do that. And I don't know who y'all had as number one, uh, but he'd have to be up there already. I mean, he hasn't even really done anything yet but recruit, but he'd have to be close, right? I mean, well, how's the ranking? Al, we, we were worried because, you know, you're Mr. Rules when it comes to these top fives. you got all these rules about what you can and can't do, and you're following sure. like some other kind of rule book that Houston and I usually are not following. So yeah. we didn't know if even a first-year coach at Clemson could be qualified under the Allen Adams rule book here. It's so could call. he be qualified? It, it's a tough call, but goodness gracious, when he's putting a recruiting class on paper like this, I mean, and he's already and he's already done this at Auburn. This is not something that that's new. This is not something that he hasn't done before. He's coached defensive line and done it very successfully already. It just hasn't happened at Clemson yet. But all signs point to it's going to in a hurry. Man, what a what a progressive thing, Al. Already going and putting a new coach at top of the list. Yeah, I mean, I said he he's got to be near the top of the list. I didn't necessarily say he was, but um, I would I would certainly listen to an argument for him being up there, no doubt. The next thing you know, Al, you're going to be putting entire uh, years of classes of, 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 of student athletes at the top of your list, or maybe not at the top, but pretty close to the top. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Well, you know, I didn't have him as my number one, Al. I had uh, Mike Reed as my number one. So Fair just enough. giving you Fair a little enough. recap. I think, I think Houston also Reed did. One as well. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think know. my number two, I can't, you know, I have a terrible memory, but I think my number two was Brandon Streeter. Uh, with his with his quarterback recruiting added in there as well. So that's what I was uh, kind of leaning towards. I, I kind of blended it between on-the-field results plus him being able to get promoted into an offensive coordinator plus also off-the-field recruiting results as well. You said, I don't remember who you had as number two. I, I have to go back and look at the tape. Um, you know, <laughs> I've got uh, – you know, I've got a memory of a of a. I think you probably game. said C.J. Spiller or something. You were you were kind of way out there with that. Uh, well, some of it was. I mean, I, I put C.J. Spiller on the list not because necessarily people want to bash him for recruiting, but you got to think of who what the steadiest unit was in 2021. That was running back, and it was Facts. at the top. There's no question yeah. about that, mm -hmm. and that's why he made my top five. Especially later on in the season, which is what we really kind of defended, which we got in the chat. People were like, whoa, 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 C.J. Spiller, really? No way, you know. But what we ended up defending was the fact that, that they progressively got better. It, mm -hmm. Well, they also got healthy, you know. Yeah. So it helped as they got on later on. And, you know, I just think this year is going to be a year where, where we'll see some more improvement from the running game. And we actually have a topic that we'll cover about one specific, uh, the most important, I think, uh, running back under – uh, CJ Spiller this year, and we'll see how he does, or what we're gonna what, what we're gonna talk about tonight, and, and what we think he's gonna do this year. Um, all right, so another topic that was hot, and I'll start with Houston this time. We'll go around the round table the other way. Was five star DJ Lagway also, um, you know, come out and basically had a quote that, hey, he's Clemson's primary target, like the star of stars for the 2024 class. Now, Al, you know, this is near and dear to my heart because uh, his video editor ended up using my voice in his recruiting video when he was here on campus, Right. which, you know, I'm, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. As long as you commit to Clemson, I'll allow it. If not, <laughs> if not, listen for my lawyer. 
you know, right. but no, I'm not, I'm just kidding. You can use whatever you want. I don't really care, but, uh, I thought it was really cool to hear, you know, hear my voice, you know, on his video. I mean, yeah, I, I, what, what can I say? I mean, Houston, Houston doesn't know what that, that feels like yet. Uh, but Houston, what do you think about DJ Lagway? Do you agree that he is basically the, the key, the primary, the top guy, the, the star on the top of the Christmas tree? I mean, I, I feel like for the quarterback room, I would I would feel probably the most comfortable out of the group. Um, if you're able to go into Texas not once but twice and pluck out the top quarterback prospect from that state, that says something. Now, he is a completely different athlete than Cade Klubnick. Completely different. Um, I don't want to – I don't, I don't think it's also fair to be like, oh, he's the Kelly Bryant to the whatever, whatever. I don't think he's that either. Um, the comp that I like to put him to is he's a bigger, broader version of Dennis Dixon for my people that grew up in 2005, 6, and 7. Uh, during the, the harder years of the, the Bowden era, it was really fun to watch some other teams like West Virginia and Oregon. And Dennis Dixon was a quarterback for Oregon who was so much fun to watch. And that's kind of who I see in DJ Lagway. He's got to work on some of his mechanics a little bit. Um, he's still a little raw, but at the same time, kid's baller. Like he plays. He he's he's raw, but if you get this going the right way, Clemson's offense could could really use the type of athlete that he is. John gets in. He says Houston looks like a giant in the middle there, and I, you know it's his beard. Half of it's his beard. You know, if you cut your beard, man, yes. you wouldn't look so giant there in the middle. But hey. Uh, I'm gonna scoot up because I'm like I noticed I was kind of like leaning back, and then I also noticed I was I was in the dark, so I'm still working out the uh, the the production here. So I appreciate everybody's patience. Hey, we got about 30 people over on Facebook and YouTube combined. If you don't mind, take a second, hit the like button. That will really help the ag algorithm and get more Clemson fans in here. Another way to get more Clemson fans in here is to tell other Clemson fans, be a friend, tell a friend about the show every Thursday night, 7 p.m. But let's get in and say hello to people. We've got John Sarian gets in as always. He's always on the show, so we appreciate him getting in. Anyone else see the clip of Vizina running a touchdown, supposedly clocked at 20, greater than 20 miles per hour, speedy? I haven't seen that yet, but, um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm planning on going to see him. He plays for Briarwood Christ Christian, which is like five minutes away from my uncle's house in uh, Birmingham. So I plan on going this year. Uh, Al, Al Houston, you guys want to come with me? Let me know. We'll, we'll all go and check him out see how he's – maybe we can get on the field and get an interview or something. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Maybe they'll let us play. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, you know, maybe you, maybe not me. <laughs> I'll be up in the booth doing the call, and you can be down there making the catches. Uh, man, dude, can you imagine if you got – if you actually were allowed to play and then caught a touchdown from the – you know, maybe – I'm in. Wow. Uh, all right, Kevron gets in. He always says hello to everybody. Uh, Kevron also says nice beard, too, by the way. Uh, all guys, hey, you guys, says, hey, guys, go Tigers. Uh, also, Timothy gets in, says, hashtag we too deep 23 About to move on to 2024 here pretty soon. Um, and we got some, we got Jeff, Joey, um, Brad also gets in. Corey gets in. Mel gets in. Bible Belt Beauties, Big Mick, Al Coon. Let's go Clemson football. We appreciate everybody. I'm going to scroll back through and get to some questions, but let's get let's get to some topics as as well as we go through. All right. So the first thing up on the list, guys, and I mentioned this about the running backs, and and let's start with that. Okay. So the question that I'm throwing to you guys is, can Will Shipley be the next Christian McCaffrey? CMC. Now, Al, you didn't know what CMC was because you're not a Panther fan. No. So you didn't even care about that, Mr. <laughs> Non-Panther fan over here. True story. Um, but but the question is, and let me let me pull up my notes here. But the question is, can can Will Shipley be that guy? Now my now let me let me pose some things to you. Let me set this up for you first, and and get in the get in the comments if you if you think yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. Actually, don't hit the thumbs down because you might accidentally hit thumbs down on the video. I don't want you to do that. Um. So, Christian McCaffrey. Houston, 2015. All right, he was uh, he was a, he was a sophomore in 2015. Man, it seems like forever ago, right? Uh, 2019 yards rushing, 1,000 yards kick return, and 645 yards receiving, 13 total touchdowns. All right, so over over three thousand, almost four three thousand seven hundred yards <laughs> all purpose. It is sophomore sophomore year. Now he declined in his um, 2016 year, his junior year. He 
He didn't do as much kick returning, and so he, he was about 2,000 yards total with 16 total touchdowns there in his junior year. But when I go back and I watch Christian McCaffrey, he's a guy looks very similar to Will Shipley. Well, I'll say Will Shipley looks very similar to him because of the, you know, the age difference there. You gotta gotta pay respect to your elder there. But he runs extremely hard on almost every every highlight I saw. You just see him planting his feet extremely hard. Obviously he's one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the league right now. Um debatable for sure. If you're a fantasy football guy, he probably is the best guy for you considering all the things he can do. But what he was really good at, man, he was a a running back screen killer. He would always be open and he had soft hands, man. He could catch just about everything that came his way and he would get open and find a way to get open. He had skills in literally all types of plays. He had eye formation. He had uh, the the spread, he, like I said, he, he could do the, he could do the screens. He could go out wide. Um, he literally could do everything and do everything at a high level. And then all, obviously kick returning as well as a sophomore. Now he really didn't, he really didn't come on the scene as a freshman. So Will Shipley on the other hand, now as a freshman, uh, 1,121 all purpose yards, 11 touchdowns. So as far as like on the score sheet, you know, as on the stat sheet, I guess you could say, He's already kind of got a leg up because he had a really good freshman year as far as yards are concerned. So he's a little bit ahead of where McCaffrey was. But I've noticed in some of the forums, there's still some doubt whether or not, can he be that guy? Houston, we'll start with you. What do you think? Can he be that guy? Is he already that guy? Or if not, you know, why, why not? But my big thing is, what does he need to do this year to really kind of get up in that level of the CMC? Well, here's the thing. This this is a twofold answer, okay? I don't think it's fair to compare him to Christian McCaffrey. I don't think they have the same body type at all. Um, I think Christian McCaffrey was more of a a scoop back, get him in space, get him able to jitterbug and move and, you know, get into open space. Will Shipley can be a hammer as far as that goes. I saw someone talk about, you know, tripped up leg tackles. How many times did we see that with Travis Etienne in his freshman year? A ton. Um, not saying that Shipley is as, as fast as Travis Etienne. There's not many people that can say that. But with Will Shipley, I think what you're looking at with his type, he's more someone of another Stanford back that was in the Heisman race that I would I would put more comps to, like Toby Gerhardt. Um, he's faster, and I think he could end up being stronger than him. But he's someone that – Yes, you can get him in space. You can get Shipley in space, and he can go. But he's not also afraid to hit somebody either. Um, I mean, you think about it. Uh, I don't think there's been a time in, in, in Clemson's history where they've got three sort of semi-similar backs um, that can do something a little different between Shipley, Pace, and Moffa. But at the end of the day, all three of those backs can just wear you down. And that's the biggest thing that I see with this. Can Shipley be the guy? be someone that maybe eventually in the next year or two is in New York. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know uh, if I would, if I think it's fair to compare him to Christian McCaffrey. Alan, do you agree? I know you're not a Panther fan, but do you agree that, uh, you know, that with what Houston says, it's not necessarily a fair comparison or, or apples to apples comparison there. Yeah. It's, it's not exactly the same. So, I, what I think Shipley has to do, and I, I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know what Christian McCaffrey did as a freshman uh, as far as far as catches, but if he wants to be that guy that can do everything, he's got to catch the ball out of the backfield, which he did not do his freshman year. He had several drops that should not have happened, and he'll tell you the same thing uh, because, like, uh, you were talk- I think you were talking about him. Uh, you were going back and forth a little bit there, but I'm pretty sure uh, Shipley had great, great touch in high school, great, really soft hands in high school. It was something we talked about on the recruiting video, caught everything. He did not do that as a freshman here. Uh, and as Houston mentioned, they're a little bit different back. Shipley is a little bit bigger, can, you know, bulldoze people if you need be, but he's also really quick. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to talk about arm tackles. Yeah, it, it seemed to me like, you know, a lot of times he might have hit a lane and tried to, to try to cut a little too fast, got tripped up a little bit, something like that. Uh, he, he'll get out of that. That's no problem. He'll he'll maintain his balance. He'll work on that through the offseason. I'm not I'm not overly concerned about that. I think they're going to be similar with the impact that they make. Now, Christian McCaffrey was kind of the guy. I mean, he was Stanford's like really entire offense. So, um, you, you know, maybe 
Shipley doesn't quite get the love because we still have Pace, who's an awesome running back. We still have Mafa. Uh, you know, we got other guys to talk about other than other than Christian McCaffrey. You know, so we've got kind of a three-headed monster there. Um, and I think it's going to be a little bit different. I don't know that he's going to be able to be singled out quite as much as McCaffrey was, uh, but we'll see how it goes. He turns out to be, you know, like Christian McCaffrey, then um, he comes is going to be in good shape. So I'm not worried about it. Let's get in the chat and see what you have to say, because again, this is about you getting a part of the show. If you join the live show, you can do that every Thursday, 7 PM. Um, all right. So a, hey, you guys, or should I say all oh, guys, let me know in the chat how to say your name, but uh, he see, he just seems to have a little more power than Shipley. A lot of arm tackles on ship last year. That's what, um, what do you think, Houston? Uh, that, that's the comment that I saw earlier. I was like, eh, incomplete. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, uh, Oh, well, there's a lot of arms. You're talking about finished Christian McCaffrey product versus freshman Will Shipley. Now, look, if we get midway through this year and he's constantly being tripped up in the line of scrimmage, it's another thing. Sure. But I also I also think, like, it's going to be the approach for using Shipley. Because that's the other thing, too. We didn't exactly know. The, the running back room looked completely different around this time last year. We were talking about Lin J, Mikey Dukes, what they're going to be doing, how they're going to run. Isn't that crazy? Season. Yeah. <laughs> now it's it's Shipley. It's his his time. He's going to get his reps. Pace is going to get his reps. Moff is going to get his reps. So McCa- uh, he says McCaff and John gets in on Facebook says McCaffrey or he meant he meant McCaffrey wore out his body. Yes, he plays hard, but can't do that forever. Hope Shipley can take care of his body. It kind of goes back to what Al was saying. You know, uh, McCaffrey was like literally the guy. So thankfully, Clemson doesn't have to rely on one the guy, which will take away from his potential opportunities, you know, right. which is something you have to be OK with. But to be honest with you, in today's world, you don't get a lot of. Uh, years as a running back because mm-hmm. you get beat up so bad. So um, it, it really has turned into a more running back by committee, which is a good thing for those legs to keep them as as uh, healthy as possible. Right. Um, Timothy gets in over on YouTube, says Shipley is a lot thicker. I will agree with that. When I look at the two film, I did notice that it seemed like Ship has some thicker upper body than McCaffrey did. Now, McCaffrey still could could lay a stiff arm on you. But it seems like Shipley's pretty, pretty. Uh, he's kind of getting there, you know. Now I'll say on the other side of things, CMC, he had a cut move that was just sick. I mean, literally the best in the in the Pac-12 could not handle any of his moves. So, um, and I will say this too, a lot of Shipley's pretty decent highlights came against NC State, came against Pittsburgh. You know, so he was able to show what he could do against some of the better teams in the ACC. Um, I would like to see him, uh, you know, really turn it up a notch, obviously, as a sophomore year. As, as Al mentioned, he would tell you the same as well. Um, Bible Belt says, Shipley just getting acclimated to the college game last year. I think that's true. Think about it. I mean, McCaffrey only had 300 yards as a freshman, I believe, rushing. So a little bit over 300. So Shipley is already ahead of the game when it comes to uh, at least uh, opportunities that are out there. Um, so Big Mick gets in and says, Clemson running backs are so mechanical. I need to see them more fluid to see the hole and attack rather than running into the back of his offensive line. Al, we'll throw that to you. Did you feel like that the running backs ran into their back of their offensive line a lot last year? Uh, not in particular, but I mean, in all honesty, Clemson's offensive line was not very good uh, last year. Uh, so <laughs> you're getting I mean, in the way, man. <laughs> may, maybe the defensive line's pushing the offensive line into the running back as opposed to the other way around. I mean, they're, yeah, obviously they're supposed to be patient, and wait for their gaps to open up, and if the gaps don't open up, I mean, there's nowhere to go. So uh, maybe, maybe I'm just misremembering, but I, I don't remember a ton of that. But I'm sure it happened, like I said, with a, with a weeko OL last year, or you know, substandard play. You know, maybe that's maybe it happened more often than I remember. The famous Allen misremembrance. That's right. Al Coons gets in, says Houston is spot on yet again. You know what? The, Houston, Jackson mail. You have you have earned your spot in the middle of the screen yet again, my friend. You know, just just the fans love you. I mean, my goodness. Mel gets in, says Shipley not as fast as high school film portrayed him to be. I haven't seen him outrun nobody. Houston. Um... What do you think? Did you watch the South Carolina game by any no. chance, or or the Iowa State game? He had a, he had a game in that one. I mean, I don't think he's going to win an eighty-yard sprint with with a, a DB against uh, yours truly. 
Yeah, well, uh, I think you'd be you, Morgan, but don't worry. Uh, I don't. <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't, don't put an L on me yet. Let, I, let just, me have I'm my opportunity. It, it, I, don't, I think he's a different type of back. Like I just, not every back is going to be a, a, a four three sprinter or whatever, and that's fine. Like generally, those are the types of backs that can last longer if they're take care of their bodies. Um, and that's all you need as long as you're a hammer. That's okay. Bible Belt says, I remember watching Ship outrun the entire Gamecock defense. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody getting in on the chat there. Um, you know, I think it's a good discussion. It's really fun discussion because, hey, we're comparing him to literally one of the best. So uh, the fact that he has that opportunity and has the talent to get there, again, as Hugh mentioned, different. So if you say, oh, man, he's going to be the next Christian McCaffrey, he is kind of different. You know, it's not you can't can't really compare him straight up. All right. All right. So I, I appreciate I, I love that, guys. I really appreciate it. You getting in the chat. Don't forget to hit the like button. we got about 45 watching now. We want to get to 50. The way to get to 50, hit the like button. And then again, share it and tell a friend, hey, text them right now. Take a second. Text them right now. And say, hey, get on YouTube, search the Morgan Thomas show and come in and be a part of the live show and get in and let's have some a good time tonight. All right. The next one is an interesting one. I hope you all enjoy this question here. But it's about a wide receiver. Mr. Joe Ngata. Joseph Ngata. Joe Ngata. Will Joe Ngata finally break out this season in 2022? Now, let me give you some stats here. Joe Ngata, high four-star, five-star, depending on what recruiting outlet you look at. Al, you and I, we, we did a review on him. We loved him. Everything mm-hmm. about it was awesome. We loved it. 2019, as a freshman, 240 yards, three touchdowns. 2020, you know, he had that oblique problem. I think he had some foot issues, maybe even a hand issue, neck, you know, ears, nose, throat, whatever. All kinds of things going wrong with the entire team. Not just him, not throwing shade, but the entire team. 2020, uh, he had 83 yards and zero touchdowns. And then 2021, 438 yards and one touchdown. It was actually second, which just makes it even worse, to, to Justin Ross as far as yards, receiving yards, who Justin Ross had his own batch of troubles and is continuing to try to get out of those troubles. Now having a second foot surgery and can't even play this year in the NFL to have his opportunity. So still, still guy who's – been dealing with a lot of injuries, Joe and Gata behind him. Now I know, I know the chat. I can see the chat. It's like tick, 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 tick. The guy who threw him the ball is definitely part of the issue, right? We know that, but these are definitely, sh- I mean, this is, this is now three years of experience and he doesn't have a thousand yards total in his career. He only has four total receiving touchdowns right now. I still feel like I have faith in him to be what we expected him to be from Folsom, California. Um, but my question to you guys is, do you feel like that he will make a break? He will step up and have a breakout season this year. I don't know who we started with last question. Uh, was it Houston? Was it Al? Whoever we didn't start with continue. All right. <laughs> you have, you have the floor. All right. So Houston pointed to himself. So I guess that means I go first. Right. (laughs) That's perfect because, you know, we talked a lot about Ngata. I I remember doing his high school film and what's crazy is, and we've talked about this on the show before, this kid to me had some of the best receiver film I've seen from a high school player. And that's not to say, you know, he had, you know, the longest touchdowns or anything like that. What I mean by that is he did everything well, everything. Uh, I'm talking about uh, deep passes, short passes, blocking, catching in traffic, high point, everything running routes. Yeah, he did everything well. I thought this this kid was going to come in and be one of the best receivers Clemson's ever had. Now, that has not played out at all, most of which is all due to injury. Um, I, I'm here to say, yeah, DJ, well, he was part of the problem last year, and we all know that, but it, it's it's him being healthy. That's really, that's really all it is. Can he stay healthy? Because I, I still think this kid's going to do it. I think it's going to happen this year. If he can, st- if he can stay healthy, that's the key. I hate, I hate having to put that asterisk on everything. But if he can stay healthy, yes, I absolutely think he's going to be the receiver we all thought he was going to be when he got here. I saw somebody over in the comments say uh, that they thought he was a developmental receiver. I don't think he was a developmental guy at all. 
Uh, I think uh, maybe he was thinking of a Joe, a Joe. Uh, he was very developmental. Obviously, he did not, uh, you know, end up sticking sticking around. But yeah, I, I just I'm gonna have to disagree with Big Mick there. And Gata was ready made coming out of high school. Uh, the kid looked like the part coming off the bus, physically ready to rock and roll. Uh, except for you know injury wise, you know, it's just uh, it's just kind of one of those things that's happened. He's been snake bit his whole career. I hope that doesn't happen this year because I'm telling you, I love this kid and I think he's got what it takes to be a star. Literally, his go-to moves are all the same moves and same plays in high school that they are still using in college. He just has to stay healthy and be able to complete those and be out on the field. You got to be on the field if you want to perform. And that's the biggest thing for me is that, you know, he's constantly dealing with the injury bug. We got a lot of people in the chat mentioning that as well. But again, Al, when you go back and watch his film, I did a little bit of a review today. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's blowing by guys. And he's in Folsom. This is not some scrub team where he's playing scrubs. He's over yeah. there in California playing legit competition, high-level high school football. He's beating guys deep. He's knocking guys over. He's jumping like seven feet in the air, hurtling people, uh, diving into the end zone, one-handed catches, one-on-one, -on -one, in the back of the corner of the end zone, doing yeah. literally wide receiver screen monster. I put down here again, was a wide receiver screen killer. <laughs> Would you say that right now? Would you say he's a jump ball killer right now? Would you say he's a one-on-one, -on -one, a deep threat, an extra yards guy, an every play guy, fought off everyone? These are the notes I had from his senior year. Yeah. But you don't see it at all right now because of the injuries. So his potential, yeah, definitely still there. Houston, what do you think? So, and someone was getting to this point um, when I was, I was thinking kind of how I would put this. Um, Dabo has a knack for sticking with his guys and pumping them up. And a lot of times we're all like, are you sure? I don't <laughs> see it. I don't see it with this guy. Someone mentioned the first example was Cornell Powell. What did he do for three years, four <laughs> years, however long before his, his last year in 2020? I don't remember. I don't remember anything. And then in 2020, he – becomes the best wide receiver on the team, hands down, takes over. And that's what Dabo Sweeney had been saying for a long time. I think about Kevin Dodd on defense. Kevin that's Dodd is coming along. He's coming along. Brent Venables doesn't think he's going to do anything, but I'm telling you this guy's going to do it. And what's he do in 2015? The light comes on. And so not just with Joe and Gata, but even with DJ, he's been pumping both these guys up for a long time. And – one side of it is if they don't perform, it's not like there isn't replacements this time, right? I don't think he wants to dive into that because he has a belief in that. I also think that if you're willing to pump these guys up and, and dig in, maybe he knows something. Maybe he knows that they've turned a corner because um, this has been something that's pretty even, – even something like Hunter Renfro. He knew about Hunter Renfro before anybody else did, right? So he knows what he's talking about. So I could see this absolutely being a year where – it's another year to, of developed chemistry between DJ and Joe and Gata. Maybe DJ has finally cleared his head. Maybe he's been able to slow the game down a little bit. And maybe for Joe and Gata, it's been a chance for him to finally get healthy because that's issue number one. And then finally get, get what essentially is needed to be a wide receiver at Clemson. And I think, I think it can happen hopefully. Um, Cause if it's not, it's not like there isn't other options this year. Yeah, Al, Al Houston, I agree with you guys. I think uh, I think Joe, you know, if this is going to be it, I mean, this should this could be it. I mean, you know, you're talking about Cornell Powell. I interviewed Dabo Sweeney. I had a question for him. I said, "Hey, Dabo, you keep saying that Cornell Powell is going to break out. This is like he's showing out in practice. He's, but I said, you know, it seems like he's Mister Friday, but not Mister Saturday. Is this really the year?" And Davis said, hey, I believe it. I really do. And guess what, man? Literally, that year, they needed him the most. He was Mr. Clutch. He was Mr. Saturday for uh, Trevor Lawrence when he needed him. And he got himself into the NFL because of how well he did. And uh, so I really I really think that Joe Ngata has that same opportunity. You know, uh, He just has to take advantage of it. And again, as we mentioned, he's got all the talent in the world. He's got all the film in the world. He's just got to stay healthy and get out on the field. You know, you can't get yards if you're not on the field at all. So that's a big deal. I th and you know what? These players, they know. 
They know. They, they're their big. They're their own biggest critic. If you're if you're trying to be an elite. NFL type guy, you're probably beating yourself up too, trying to make sure that you meet your own expectations. So, um, but they know. Uh, I'll be interested to see because if he can be that guy that he was in high school, Al, that's the deep threat guy. Yeah, that's the that's the one on one guy that Clemson sorely missed last year. I, I want to point one thing out, and I don't know if this is on the list, Morgan, but I want to bring this up from what Dabo said at the media outing. Is it kind of crazy that he's already mentioned that both Antonio Williams and Adam Randall will be returned in, uh, especially when Adam Randall gets back? Apparently, they are top billing, and apparently Adam Randall, despite the injury that he had, he's he's going to Mari Rogers with it, and he's going to be back early. There's going to be options, and that's the thing. Whoever the quarterback is, if DJ figures it out or if it's Cade that takes over, I think people are going to be surprised – at the improvement of the wide receiving game this year. Um, I think there's going to be a step forward regardless. It might take a game or two or three or four or whatever, but there's going to be improvement this year. How many games is it going to take, Houston? Better you be. named like all the games. Well, it, like I said, it could be three or four because there might be a quarterback. Five, six, seven? Well, no, it could be a quarterback competition. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you might want to do that, you know? <laughs> oh, you got to throw that one. He, you like how he threw that one in there, Al. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's a quarterback going to. All right, there. so talking about Adam Randall, we got Mel Graves gets in over on YouTube, talks about Adam Randall. Um, Adam says, quote, we don't have a projected target date because you don't want to put pressure on the trainer or even the athlete. Just being able to continue to get better and build confidence. That's what you have to do when you're recovering from an ACL. You have to build as much confidence as you had before and probably even more now because you know you're not invincible anymore. As soon as I have enough confidence and I feel I well enough to get back on the field, I will as soon as I can. So no timetable there, but definitely some good news from the Adam Randall uh, camp there that he is on track or actually beating pace. And he felt like he could emulate Amari Rogers and emulate Deshaun Watson and recover quickly and see a, some significant playing time in 2022. Al, what do you think? Look, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of take the, uh, the wait and see approach here. I, I kind of want to take a more conservative approach and, and feel like, you know, even even if he gets to play some, which I think he'll get to play some, I don't I don't have any doubt about that. You know, guys are recovering quicker from these ACLs, uh, you know, than they ever have before. Mario Rogers was a good example of that. Uh, but this guy, I mean, he's a different body type. He's a bigger receiver. You would expect it uh, naturally to take a little bit longer. Um, and I mean, even when Amari Rogers came back, he wasn't 100 percent for quite a while. Uh, so I think he'll play some. I, I'm hoping that the Clemson wide receivers step up enough so that he's not going to have to play a ton. Uh, this year, and we we can worry about him being the you know being the alpha next year. Um, but I, I think he's going to get to play a little bit. I, I just don't want to rush him back, and I certainly don't want to you know don't want to put any kind of expectations that he's going to be back and be the guy right away because I think we have other options. Yeah, Houston. I mean, really, you know, it's it's admirable that he's trying to get back so quickly. But you mentioned, you know, he kind of has that that aspiration or maybe that opportunity to do something in special teams. Whereas he may not have as much opportunity to do something uh, on the field as a wide receiver, even though, to be honest with you, Houston, we heard a lot of great things coming out of spring from what he was doing um, and and really uh, going up against some of the better cornerbacks uh, Clemson has. Yeah, like I said, there's going to be improvement all around. Um, I, I just think, got to give it time. It's going to be a, a, a growth portion of the season. But I think people are going to like the finished product this year, regardless of, of who's the starting quarterback. It's going to get better. I have a request, Morgan. There's someone that's in the comment section called The Real McCoy. Can you put them up on the screen for a second? The Real McCoy. I think it's something. Who are you? All right. The Real McCoy. <laughs> Who are you? What year did you graduate from Chapman? Because <laughs> you know somebody in my family. So put what year you graduated uh, in in the chat, and or oh. you can just DM me on Facebook or uh, or uh, um, Twitter. It's your time to plug your Twitter, and you're failing. Come on, plug at, it, plug it. At Radio Guy Houston on Twitter. <laughs> at Radio Guy Houston on Twitter. Just slide into his DMs and uh, <laughs> let him know who you are. I did not know. So so Houston, tell me something oh, here. Got him. That was quick. You, what what? <laughs> he went to Boiler Man. Spring. <laughs> Houston. Man. You didn't go. You didn't go to Chapman. 
<laughs> I went to Chapman. I went to Chapman. The the real McCoy. Go to his latest comment. Oh, oh, okay. He went, he to, said, he went to Boiling Springs. Oh, it's what a big rival. disappointment for you there. It is a big disappointment. My wife went to Chapman as so. Did, oh, okay. Well, so you've seen the light. Okay, okay. He's seen the light. He has seen the light. So great. Good. <laughs> Appreciate it. The Chapman. <laughs> I mean, you know. Hey, Come it's on. Two you time know, state the, champions, baby. What did y'all do? Two time state champions. I was one of the teams that played for state. Let's go. Let Let's me go. be honest with you. Um, we didn't play for state because of one man. <laughs> that one man, that one man should be watching the show and he knows who he is. It, <laughs> it was all his fault. Two way superstar, the next coming of the greatest player to ever play at Westside High School. <laughs> Broke his collarbone, like literally trying to get a touchdown against Ben Alexander. I believe he didn't even get the touchdown. That's how disappointing this man is. Yeah, he might have got the touchdown, but he definitely walked away. He did not with get a broken the broken collarbone. Matter of fact, the next play he threw an interception. <laughs> it was <laughs> he, he broke his collarbone and then stayed in the game. Didn't realize he broke his collarbone at the time. Obviously. And then tries to throw a pass. It was an, an unbelievably lame duck, straight up in the air, and it got picked off against him. I think everybody's going to assume it, it's talking about me. No, I was a star soccer player. <laughs> man, don't put Rob on there. Rob. <laughs> Houston Rob rocked in high school. Want to roll the tape. Rob, we need to roll trash, the tape. Dude. Rob, that's Not, trash. All right, we got a high school rivalry going on. Pendleton Bulldogs now getting in. All you right. Know, everybody's getting in. We got, we got uh, Inman. Oh, uh, you know, real McCoy is from Bowling Springs. There, you know, he's in Inman. Inman, Inman. It's not Bowling. Inman's not Bowling Springs. Not the same. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm. I'm. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to. I mean, he's just giving me all these locations: Chapman, Inman, Bowling Springs. Who knows where he's from? I mean, is he even a real person? We don't know. Oh, well, he's very real. He's very real. <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody getting in. We got about 50 people watching right now. We really appreciate you getting a part of it. This. This. YouTube channel has really been picking up because it's getting closer and closer to football season. I think Al Houston, I think it's like under 40 days, maybe, maybe give or take right at 40 or less yeah. than 40. It's crazy. The amount of day, less than, less than a, a, almost around a month to go yep. before we get to uh, see Clemson back on the field again. So I'm excited about it. Um, talking about guys we want to get to see on the field. These are guys that are preseason all ACC team. So six Tigers listed to the all ACC preseason team. Let me give you the list of, of guys here. Running back, Will Shipley. Offensive tackle, Jordan McFadden. Defensive end, Miles Murphy. Defensive tackle, Brian Brissy. Linebacker, Trenton Simpson. And place kicker, BT Potter. Now of those six guys, here's my difficult question of the night here's here's my stressful question for you i asked the important questions here of those six guys from the all acc preseason team who do you think is most important to clemson's success and possibly getting back to the college football playoffs of those six guys who would you say is most important i'll go ahead and give you mine i think with the offense being a hundredth in the nation Let's let's get a big turnaround with offense, and let's go with the guy that we just got done talking about, Will Shipley. I think that Clemson needs an identity bad on offense. Bigly, Houston, as Houston says, bigly. They need an identity bigly. So I'm going to actually say Will Shipley needs to be the most important of the six preseason all ACC players listed We'll start with you, Houston. Do you agree? Disagree? Why? Why not? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, from an offensive standpoint, absolutely. You need some somebody to be the bell cow. And if you're taking it just from the six, I would agree. I would also want to say that you need a performance from somebody on defense that's borderline player of the year. I, I don't want. I don't want to say that they all have to, but I want to see somebody like Trenton Simpson go out there and just lay the wood every week. Be be kind of what a, a clowny might be on defense. Be someone that you have to take an account for because he's out there. And he's got the ability to do that. He's built like a dadgum defensive end playing linebacker, and you don't know where they're going to put him. He's that athletic. 
He's got the hands to do it. He's mean. He can tear you up. So I agree about Shipley, but I also think we can't take Trent Simpson out of the equation. If he has a major year this year, Clemson could definitely go back to the playoff. <laughs> so, uh, Morgan, you're going to love this. So I'm not going defense because I think we've got too many pieces on defense. I think, you know, if you, if you lose a guy or two here or there, then I think the others will pick up the slack. So I'm not going to single one person out on defense. I'm definitely going offense, but I'm going Jordan McFadden because Shipley, again, he's the one part of the offense where we have options. We still have Kobe <laughs> okay. Bates. We still have Phil Maffa. If you lose your left tackle, that affects <laughs> everything. It affects your offensive line, which is already, you know, has been shaky, and we expect them to improve this year. It affects your receivers because it affects DJ getting the ball to him or Cade Clubbett getting the ball to him or whatever, and it'll affect your run game. I'm going Jordan McFadden. I think he is the guy you have to lean on of the six. All right. So we got a lot of people getting in there. Trenton Simpson, um, you know, some people saying Brian Brissy. Uh, so I, I think that it's easy to pick the defense because, you know, they're, to me, they're the most solid already. They're most proven out there. Again, I think also Will Shipley is relatively proven, you know, considering what he was able to do last year, over a thousand all purpose yards for the Tigers. Um, I do also think Jordan McFadden, man, Mr. Consistency. One thing you could count on, on the offensive line, Big Al, is that the tackles were going to be there. Right. <laughs> you know, everybody else, maybe not so much, but the tackles <laughs> in Parks and in uh, McFadden were at least going to be there and play the entire time. So yep. um, Clemson has obviously got some guys that are coming down the pipe that are going to fill those voids, too, and kind of replace those guys um, eventually. They're still kind of young, um, but, you know, they yet again are going to rely on those two outside guys to really be leaders and anchor. Uh, and then Will Putnam to try to add some stability and consistency and and veteran leadership to the center position. But again, going to the all ACC preseason team, running back Will Shipley, offensive tackle Jordan McFadden, defensive end Miles Murphy, defensive tackle Brian Brissy, linebacker Trenton Simpson, and place kicker uh, BT Potter. So of those, now here's my next difficult question for you: Is who on the list maybe would was left off that is going to be extremely important. Now, I'll go ahead and give you mine. I am really excited and amped about seeing what this kind of refreshed linebacker core is going to look like. I know he's not technically probably going to be listed as maybe a linebacker. I'm not sure. Maybe a weak side linebacker. Maybe he's still going to be kind of a nickel guy. I don't know. Maybe Trenton Simpson goes into something a little bit more traditional. But I'm going to say Barrett Carter. You know, I like I big agent zero. I want to see what he can do. Now, obviously, I don't expect him to be a preseason all ACC guy. So I'm not I'm not surprised that he wasn't on the list. But I feel like by the end of the season, you could very well see a terror on both sides of that second level of the defense. Simpson on one, Carter on the other. My thought being, if you've got Simpson on one side, you've likely got Murphy or XT, or KJ, or Brissy, somebody else on that side too. So if you're thinking about, hey, let's go to some weakness, you're probably incorrectly choosing to go towards zero, who's going to get, in my opinion, more action because they're going to try to go away from 22. Houston, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about somebody, so I'm going to take this in a different direction. There's a defensive player that apparently is not on the list. I'll lob that up to Al for this, um, but I'm going to take this – as a y'all probably hate this but it's not going to be like i'm gonna say oh freshman or something <laughs> it's whoever wins the slot it's whoever wins whether it's will taylor or specter okay or ej williams or or even e, um or uh antonio williams any of those four guys if they end up winning the job and being consistent mind you if you can be that third down and five person that third down and seven person that just finds a hole and gets there that is, I mean, everybody's been complaining about what's been missing. Boom. You can also honorable mention the tight end, but I, that's a whole nother can of worms there. I'm just going to say whoever wins the slot um, consistently could be the person that could be on that list. So, which is a great answer, by the way. I think the slot is an incredibly important position uh, and it's going to be huge for us this year. And, and, but, you know, I'm getting a little confused as to what the original question was because. 
Who knows? I thought you said basically who could have been on that list. So I thought there was kind of two things. Somebody very important to the success of the season and also could have potentially been on that list. Well, we don't have a slot wide ride, ride receiver that should have been on that list. So I, I'm I'm a little I'm trying I guess to put I really didn't follow together. my own rules there. I'm sorry. I'm trying to put those together. Them. And honestly, there's only a couple that really should have even been on the list that that weren't. You know, a lot of people are mentioning Makuba in the comments, and I certainly understand that. I understand also why he was not on the list because I mean I mean he only played, you know, part of the season as a starter. I agree with Bill Lanham. He gets in there, says Makuba will be on the final list. I totally agree with that. But no mention of Tyler Davis, who has been the anchor at defensive tackle. Uh, I mean, he's been the stud of studs. He doesn't have the measurables, so he doesn't get all the love that everybody else gets. But he's in there. He's always making plays. When the, when he went out on defense, you know, over the past couple of years, it's been bad. You can see the drop off. You can tell when Tyler Davis is not in the game, and he needs to he needs to be there, stay healthy. I think he certainly could have been on this list, and he's incredibly important to the season. We got a lot of people getting in, getting their comments in. So we've got, let me go through them real quick. Bible Belt Beauty says Miles Murphy. Uh, he was on the list. Um, so, you know, he's already there. But uh, Tyler Davis, obviously, uh, as Al mentioned. Timothy says Carter reminds me of Isaiah Simmons ish. Uh, Justin over on Facebook says, I hope we blitz as much as Venables did. did. It'll be as if he never left. So Blitz Venables, as I affectionately call him, uh, I don't know if they're going to blitz as much. I do feel like that they're still going to be extremely aggressive. But from what I understand, it seems like that there's going to be a little bit of tweaks here and there. Um, you know, you know, maybe not so much relying on like last minute calls to the line, and maybe more pre uh, and let and less op options out there. I don't know. I didn't. I'm not going to say dumb it down. But it's going to be a little bit easier to pick up and less having to wait to the last minute and try to figure out what that play is going to be. I'm curious to see, Al. I really am. I don't, I don't yeah. know. It didn't seem like it was very much different against Iowa State, though. <laughs> no, it definitely didn't. I, but I love it. I mean, I think it's going to be great. I love the athletes we have along the defense this year. Uh, it's it's going to be fun to watch. I think they're going to play hard. I think they're going to play fast. I, honestly, I, I believe it's going to it's going to be reminiscent of a Georgia defense from last year, which is you know I hate to give Georgia any kind of credit, but we all know how good their defense was last year. I think you're going to see a lot of that from Clemson. XT did get on Twitter um, right before the show. Let me. Um... Let me pull it up real quick. I'm not going to pull it up on the screen, but I'll read it to you um, because I thought it was very encouraging from his camp as well. Uh, he says, finally reached my goal of 15% body fat, which if you've ever actually tried to reach that goal, that's that's a difficult goal to reach, by the way. And uh, down 4.5%, lost 12 and a half pounds of fat. Lowest I've ever been in my career was 16 and a half body fat back in 2018. And if that gives you any idea, God is always on time, red heart. Dominique Thompson says, back to the speed demon. Uh, does that, if you're if you're an opposing offensive line, running back, are you a quarterback? Are you kind of trembling at that tweet right there, especially if you're an ACC? Maybe if you're a Georgia Tech guy, are you kind of shaking in your boots right now after hearing that? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you think about the depth that this defensive line has. It's scary. And, I mean, there are people on this defensive line that I'm like, oh, man, I, I keep forgetting Clemson has that guy. And that sounds terrible to say because of how much talent there is. Like a guy like Peyton Page, who was a highly touted guy, who is going to be very good at Clemson. And I saw him post on Twitter the other day. I'm like, oh, yeah, he is at Clemson. I totally forgot about that. I hope he has a big year this year. And, I, Peyton, if you're watching, I, I doubt you are. But if you are, I hope you have a big year this year. But you're on a super talented defense, man. And, like, I just consider that a special time, man. You um, you don't think that he pays attention to the show? I mean, come on. I mean, we he, literally... he does want to know how to idolize, like, the proper beard usage. But that's why he chooses to do that. Um, we got 57 people watching right now. Hopefully Peyton Page is one of those 57. But uh, if you are watching right now, make sure you hit the like button over on Facebook or YouTube. If you haven't already, follow us on Facebook. Follow us over on uh, Twitter at The Morgan T Show or at Radio Guy Houston. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and again, you can share with your friends because we do this every Thursday night, 7 p.m. We'd love to get over 60 viewers um, because we're right at eight o'clock. So we may, I may be able to squeak in one more topic for big Al if he'll let me. 
if he'll if he'll allow it. Squeak it in. Squeak it in. Well, what I wanted to bring up is a guy we hadn't done video on yet. So we want to get into our, our video series going back to our, um, you know, recruiting videos that we do. This is a guy still out there for the Tigers, Caden McDonald. All right. So uh, before we do that, fellas, let me just go ahead and type this up as I, I did not put the, the text in. Highlight review. Here we go. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the banner in there, but you know, there we go. How's that look? Caden McDonald highlight review. And then let me pull him up on uh 24-7. And then we'll kind of go from there. I already have his video up. I just didn't have anything else up. Stop looking at me that way. I can already see I'm not looking at you right now, but I can already tell Alan's rolling his eyes at me right now. <laughs> <sighs> okay, no all right. All right, so Caden McDonald highlight review. You know, we like to do this really again. We don't we don't pretend to be experts, but we are fans. We are Clemson grads. We want to see all the best players go to Clemson. And we want to review the players so we can be in the know on what they look like before they even commit to the Tigers. Will he commit? Will he not? We don't know. We don't speculate. But we just want to talk about what he looks like in high school. North Coordinate High School guy, Caden McDonald. So let me give you some stats here from 24-7 Sports. Caden McDonald, defensive lineman, six foot three, 310 pounds from Suwannee, Georgia, North Gwinnett High School. Right now has a crystal ball, according to Rusty Manziel, to Georgia. Four-star overall, 42nd best defensive lineman in the nation, 27th best defensive lineman in the in Georgia. Top 300 guy, has 36 total offers. Looking at Florida, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio, uh, Oklahoma, and Clemson, to name a few, has already completed an official visit to Florida. <coughs> Excuse me. You know that he gets five official visits, or everyone gets a five official visits, so he's got one down. There are still more to go. I assume that he's going to probably visit more of these schools, and I, and I think Dabo and, and we would also recommend visit as many of the <laughs> schools as you can while you're out there. Um, and he just read us recently, his most recent retweet was of Barrett Carter, a guy we just recently talked about on the show, the live show, and his um, post on Twitter. So again, let's pull up some of the video and let me show it on the stream here real quick. So Caden McDonald, fellas, let's get into the review. All right, again, North Gwinnett High School. I, the reason why I picked this guy is because I literally love his film. All right. So you see him here in the middle of the line, just pushing, having his way uh, against the interior offensive lineman. Look at this, just bowling his way through. I call him like a, it looks like kind of a big bulldozer. Look at him just shedding that block, going straight to the tackle. And uh, he's definitely a very difficult guy to tackle. Man, uh, 310 pounds man. just did a, um, just did a swim move there and a, a yeah, really nice. He just sacked Dylan Lonergan like nothing to it, and now he's about to catch this touchdown. <laughs> Again, yeah, look how like Christian Wilkins type uh, uh, resemblance there. And this one I really like. He just bowls past two guys and three guys and just gets to the quarterback. Uh, Houston, when you look at his film, uh, what do you think? What are some things that pop off the film for you? This this reminds me in every sort of the way like Trey Williams on the current on the current roster. Trey Williams wasn't the top guy on the, the team or the, the class that he got recruited, but he's turned into a great player. And he look, Trey Williams this year was clutch when he needed to be. When Brzee and Davis were out, Trey Williams stepped up. And this guy's got a lot of similarities in his build and his burst. Um, he's just an absolute bear on the field. And, uh, and that's what you want to see, just an animal, eating up blocks, going after it, and wanting to inflict pain. Uh, and look, He's not like this is Mill Creek. Um, they're playing. They're playing really good teams like Mill Creek and um, uh, I can't remember where Dylan Lonergan went, but he just sacked Dylan Lonergan. So they're playing good players. Um, so I think he's going to be a good a good person who could could get on the field and contribute pretty quickly if if he were to come to Clemson. Can he blow past double teams? I say check. Does he show strong power moves and even some quickness moves? Can he get off guys? I say check, check, check there. Al, what do you think? Yeah, I am loving this guy's film. Uh, you know, he, his size for one. I mean, he's 6'3", six, he's six, three, 310. Uh, you know, huge asset right there. Okay. Got to love that. Uh, he's got good burst, really, for being that big. I think there's there's several plays where he really gets through the line fast. He's got solid use of hands, which I think is, is pretty uh, – 
pretty uncommon for a lot of high school guys. He plays really violently. I mean, he just he sticks some people in this film. Uh, he's able to shed blocks and get through double teams, just like you talked about. And, you know, he can get around you or he can go through you. It doesn't really matter. Um, but something I think he does particularly well, which I – I like to criticize, uh, you know, high school recruits for most of the time. I think he has relatively good pad level. I think he keeps his pad levels pretty low for the most part, really gets that leverage uh, to burst through the line when necessary. Uh, so I think he does that pretty well. Um, you know, I, there's no telling what they're going to want him to play at in college, maybe 315, something like that. You know, maybe lose a little, maybe reshape his body just a little bit, you know, build it back stronger with, with uh, solid muscle. But I, I love this kid's film. I think he would be another huge get for Nick Easton and Clemson. Yeah, I think, you know, you never know how a guy is going to translate into the college level, but he's already got that frame and he's already got that size. Now, the first thing you think of, Al, every time we get a guy or Clemson, I say we, I mean Clemson, every time a, a, they get a guy like that, that's already, you know, 17, 18, already well over 300, it, there is that narrative that, hey, he's going to struggle with weight. So there's always that thing to kind of overcome, like, hey, is he going to get in and and basically have to, you know, retool his body, as you mentioned, uh, Al, that, you know, does he need to do that? I think I think everybody needs to retool their body and, and build it for the college game, sure. um, even though Houston mentioned he's not playing against scrubs here. This is this is top level. Georgia football here, and uh, he is able to push around guys at will. Again, when you look at the scouting report, there are things that you look out for a defensive tackle. When you look at how good is he at power, how good is he at quickness, how good is he at getting off the ball, double teams, pass rush, pass rush moves, run game moves, leverage, and how he fills up the gap. I think that you know there's a lot to love about Caden McDonald. Anywhere he goes, uh, it's going to be cool to see how he does in the college game. Let us know what you think in the comments where you think he will go. Will he go to Clemson? Will he go somewhere else? But either way, he could be definitely a force to be reckoned with there in the interior defensive line. All right, Al, thank you for that. Now, Al, are you done? Is it time to go? Am I is done? It, time it is almost goodbye? time to go, but uh, we can – what, what, what are you thinking here? I'm thinking – we get the latest guy that we we um, that Clemson offered. All right, I'm thinking we get the latest guy, Shelton Lewis. Okay. What do you think? Let's get I him real quick. Do it. All right, they only have four minutes of film on him. I did pull up. I did actually find film from Huddle.com on him, by the way. Um, so let me go in. First of all, you know what I got to do because I didn't do this. I got to change the text. <laughs> Shelton Lewis. Hopefully, this is the same guy. Because you guys talked like you couldn't find his film, so it made me no, nervous. I found some film. Um, I found some film, but I think it was a sophomore film, and then later on was able to find some. I, what I think is his junior film. I believe this is his junior film. So, Shelton Lewis. Let's pull him up and uh, discuss him because he's a guy. He's a guy from what I understand has been has been kind of waiting on a Clemson offer for some time. So um, I'm curious to see how it all pans out and if he will end up uh, actually um, committing to Clemson. So let's take a look at some of his measurables here, some of his stats, prospect information from 24-7 Sports. Shelton Lewis, cornerback, 5'11", 180 pounds, Stockbridge, Georgia from Stockbridge High School. Um, Three-star overall guy right now, has a crystal ball to North Carolina, 25 total offers, is listed as a warmer interest in the Tar Heels and the Clemson Tigers, has done official visits on record to uh, the Tar Heels, UNC there, and Arkansas, and Pittsburgh. Now, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, he was originally committed to Pittsburgh, and so he has now opened his uh, recruiting back up and uh, going to be uh, potentially looking at where he can go. And Clemson has now taken an interest in him. So let's go ahead and, and start his highlight film here from huddle.com. Now, Al, we'll start with you. What are, what are some things? The first thing I see is he's got a mixture of some quarterback film in there as well. So <laughs> what do you think about somebody who's a, who's a quarterback and a – I don't even know if I can say it a quarterback and a cornerback. Is that uh, the versatility you're looking for in an athlete that has to play the outside? 
I, I always love it when they play quarterback because it usually means they have pretty good hands. Uh, so I, I will tell you this, and I can't remember. I, I watched so much film today. I can't remember what what I ended up seeing, but I will tell you this: the the first set of film that I saw for him, which was sophomore season, I got to tell you, I was sitting there like, eh. I mean, he's all right. Uh, you know, he, he's solid take, but nothing nothing special is what it appeared to me. But I got to tell you, the difference that the next film that I saw, I don't know if this is it or not, but I saw some other film uh, that somebody had posted in a forum. I'm like, now this is more like it. This is what this is what Reed saw, uh, you know, or whoever saw on the, the recruiting staff when they offered this kid. This is this is what we want to see, uh, you know. His toughness stood out on both sets of them, even in a sophomore film. That was the that was the main takeaway. Tough kid, really physical. Uh, but when I ch- transitioned to the new film, not only was he tough and physical, loving to lay the wood, he loves to hit you, uh, you know, not shying away from contact, which, by the way, I think is really good for, you know, a Clemson defense who likes to play a lot of press man at times and leave you out on an island. I think that's a, a, very, a very good asset. But it looks like he has a real high football IQ. He puts himself in position to make plays. Good break on the ball. Uh, I love the way he keeps his eyes on the QB. I like to mention that a lot. Flips his hips pretty well. You know, he's not – I don't think he's going to blow you away with his size or athleticism. Seems like a very solid player who Clemson would certainly get the most out of. You know, Coach Reed takes over. I think he'll be in good hands. Now, Al, I don't know. I don't think you were on the the week we did, like Caleb Downs, who's a five-star cornerback who recently right. committed to Alabama. Um, and, and I will say, wow, what a huge hit there. But I will say that a five-star guy, you know, the versatility – he has it because, he, like you said, he could play quarterback. He could play uh, a cornerback as well. He can play both sides of the ball. But when you look at a guy like, well, what makes a five-star cornerback? I mean, Caleb Downs, you see film of him literally doing freaking everything. I mean, right. he could almost play every position except for maybe an uh, offensive line. You know, he can do everything. And so when you just see what he brings to the table, the versatility is like to the max. Now, I would say – Um, that Lewis also brings a high level of versatility. And uh, I also put down that I like his recovery. You know, even if he's a few yards off, he can sniff out what the quarterback wants to do. And he has awareness and recovery speed to kind of make up that gap, whether he was playing a, a, a pad or, you know, a kind of a soft coverage or whatever, whatever the call was on the defense, he adjusts very quickly and I like to see that. So it shows great instincts. It shows great um, hip movement there, good hip movement, and then recovery speed as well. Again, I know I know people are going to say this in the comments, Al. I know people are going to say this because because you, you said it. You didn't say he was an idiot. You know, you said he had a high football IQ. You didn't say he was. You didn't say he was terrible. You just said the one film you saw didn't jump out at you. Now sure. again, we we just look at the film here. So we don't get to see the guys in camp. We wish we did. We don't get to see the guys one-on-one, seven-on-seven. We don't get to see those kind of drills, right? We don't yeah. get to see those things. That's we just exactly have to go right. by the film that he provides online. Yeah, but, no doubt. And uh, I will say this. Uh, Houston, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, one, I'll defend Al's honor. He backed up his statement and said that his junior film was better. Right, so, right. There that, are people that, that have to develop. You know, that, that's not that's a common right. that people have to develop. Right. And, and what, what was crazy was I got crucified for this, uh, you know, in the comments by some guy. And what was crazy, I think it was Jamal Anderson's film we were doing. I said something about later, we got to talking about Brent Venables, Wes Goodwin, and how crew. I wasn't even talking about Jamal Anderson anymore. And I said something about it's going to be interesting to see if, if you know, uh, Wes Goodwin will recruit guys with more athleticism and less, you know, maybe less cerebral or something like that. I wasn't talking about Jamal Anderson. Uh, and, and I understand why people thought that because we were reviewing his film. I think his film was still up there. Uh, but I was just talking in general terms at the time. So that was kind of, it was kind of funny. And he said, oh man, that's an insult. I was like, well, I mean, what if I were to say, you know, that he was less athletic, but higher football IQ, is that an insult? Because I called him less athletic. It's like some people, you know, there's a balancing act there. Some Everybody's going to be more athletic than somebody else or a higher football IQ than somebody else. Yeah. It's not an insult uh, by any means. And I can't, uh, I have no idea if Jamal Anderson is a high IQ guy or not, because I haven't been able to see him play. All I get to see is the highlight film. Uh, so it's not something I can judge yet. I'll be able to, to find out when he's on a on a college campus and playing and, and on Clemson's campus and playing. I'll tell you what kind of high football IQ or low football IQ he has. But I just no, wanted to was, say that because, I, you know, I felt like, you know, when we're <laughs> reviewing things, people can be so critical about the things we say. We're just going off of film here. 
Okay, exactly. So just, and a lot of times we're just talking about what, you know, what, how we feel as the team as a whole, as you mentioned too, but yeah, no going doubt. back, going back to Shelton Lewis, Al, you mentioned toughness. I got yeah. my scouting report. This is from my, this is from my, my source, my scout source put down here. When you're looking at a cornerback on their film, you're looking at, is the guy versatile? Is the guy athletic? Is the sure. guy tough, fearless? Does he show recovery speed? Does he show flipping of hips? Mm -hmm. Does he show instincts? Does he show some run game? Now, I will say, I don't necessarily see a ton of like run game support. Right. So that may hurt as far as his film goes. I do see a ton of man. I do see some, I do see some zone there. I do see a good range and, and good feet, foot, uh, footwork as far as what you can tell. You know, it's a little blurry a little bit. But, but Houston, we seem to like a lot about this guy. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think I think being able to see the versatility, you can see why they like him as a corner. He can do a lot of things on the outside. He can play quarterback. I'm going to be honest, the first thing that I see when he started running as a quarterback is this guy's fast. So, yeah, he's going to be able to keep up. Uh, he's got good hips. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, maybe this is somebody that you want to put in the punt return game or something like that. Take a little durability or somebody that's durable. Uh, to go and fill some punts because that guy has got some moves. Um, so you want to see if you can utilize him as much as possible. But I think as a, as a DB, he's he's always um, making the right play from what I can see. Um, he, like you said, he's got good recovery. Um, and I think overall, you know, it might take a little bit of time to develop, but I think he could be a solid guy. We've seen that plenty of times under Mike Reed yeah. um, where you may, may not see this guy as much in year one or even year two, but then three and four, he's an All-American. So that's – Something that could definitely happen. Yeah, I think that's the thing is like we're not out here giving them five stars or three stars or two stars, but we do see the difference between those. And like I said, there is a difference between the film that we we have for for Lewis and the film that you have for, say, like a Caleb Downs. But is that necessarily a bad thing? Uh, I think it's a bad thing as far as opportunity. All it says is, is that. Shelton Lewis needs more opportunity. He needs to get his chance to get out there and show what he can do. And it seems like, as what we said, uh, you know, the the coaching staff that that can develop and that can spot him wants him. So that is already God opening a door for an opportunity for Shelton Lewis to show what he can do. So hey, sometimes the difference between a three star and a five star is just being able to show what you can do. And I think you know this provides something for for Lewis to 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 ponder about now that he's opened his recruitment back up. Let us know in the comments what you think. Will he go to Clemson? Will he go somewhere else? You know he's done a couple of visits so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see how his recruitment goes. But again, it's definitely a guy who has a lot of potential and just needs the opportunity to show what he can do out there on the field. Um, a good overall versatile athlete who who is definitely very tough. So uh, thank you again for getting in. And thank you, Al, for allowing us to do um, <laughs> two, two highlight reviews tonight. Good stuff. But we got into a lot of different videos. We did a lot of topics tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed it as we went through. And let's get into um, our final goodbyes. All right. So coming up this weekend, um, again, really nothing on the docket as far as football is concerned because it's still in the postseason or it's in the off season. Clemson heavy loaded this week with their all-in cookout. So there's really – kind of maintaining the guys that they already have. Paul Strelo came on the Mickey Plyler show this morning, uh, and I was there producing, and he said, hey, this week was really all about just maintaining that um, relationship and building upon the guys that you already have. It's kind of slowed down a little bit recruiting-wise just because they have 17 now. Remember four months ago, Al, I was like, oh, what's going to happen? When are they going to get their guys? Well, now they've got 17, and there's just a few slots left to be able to fill out the 2023 recruiting class. So there'll be some more patience. There'll be guys that they're really wanting to get that want to stretch their recruitment out and go actually see game days. Go actually, before they make their commitment, go see and go take an official visit during a game day to see the atmosphere. Well, you know, if you're a Clemson fan, that can do nothing but improve your standing with that recruit because the game day experience is. Uh, one of the best in the country, I believe. So, again, 
Um, we appreciate everybody getting in and being a part of the show, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe or follow. Follow us over on Twitter at the Morgan T Show and at Radio Guy Houston. Alan, everybody wants you to be on Twitter, but Alan is refusing, from what I understand, to be on Twitter. He is boycotting something that he actually has never even been on. So, boycotting something he's never done. He's abstaining. <laughs> From his social media there. But there again, thank you so much, Al Houston, for being a part of the show. And as always, Tiger fans, on behalf of Big Al, Houston, and myself, we'll see you at the top of the hill. Tiger fans, Greenville is a wonderful place to call home. And take it from me, a great place to grow your family. The housing market can be an extremely competitive and intimidating place if you don't have the right agent. That's why we recommend our friend and local agent, Lana Smith with Live Upstate SC Real Estate. She is a native of Greenville and has been serving the needs of families in the upstate for over 20 years. You need an agent proficient in navigating the world of multiple offers who will put your needs first and guide you through the process. Let Lana help you achieve your real estate goals. Call her today at 864-608-8313. Again, that's 864-608-8313. 8313 and let's get moving. If you're looking for a great atmosphere and good food, you have to check out the Charleston Sports Pub. They're the premier sports bar location in South Carolina with locations in Clemson, Greenville, Goose Creek, James Island, Mount Pleasant, Somerville, and West Ashley. Watch all the games while you have fun playing all their games. Tiger fans, we dine there. Legends dine there like Todd Boyd, and so should you. Go eat at the Charleston Sports Pub in Clemson every game day. 359 College Avenue, Clemson. Family owned and operated, serving Anderson County and surrounding areas since 1980. Heating and Cooling Services, Inc. is your residential and commercial comfort expert. Anything from preventative maintenance of your home HVAC system to overhauling a commercial chiller and everything in between. If you want to breathe easier and be nice and cool in your home or business this summer or warm this winter, give Heating and Cooling Services, Inc. a call today. Give Mark or Jason Trammell a call at 864-224-7655. Again, 864-224-7655, and they'll take good care of you. Tiger fans, we don't just dress for success, we TS for success. That's Tiger Sports Shop. We shop there so much that they practically begged us to be sponsors for them. Not serious, but we do love shopping at Tiger Sports Shop in one of their two locations, 364 College Avenue and 1102 Tiger Boulevard in Clemson. If you're not in Clemson to check out the experience, stop by online at www.tigersports.com. Again, tigersports.com for all your game day needs.